Hello, good afternoon. My name is Cesar de la Fuente. I'm a postgraduate student at the University of Glasgow, and I have this interest to explore the relationship between gender and our daily life actions. And now I want to focus on this research on sustainability and gender, and explicitly on how men see and perceive the consumption of meat and how this can be an obstacle to make sustainable actions. So what I did is that I had these two big topics that were climate crisis and gender, and I tried to narrow them to two major concepts that were ecological care on the climate crisis topic and masculinities on the gender topic. So I have these two concepts that are related to those topics. And I came with this research question that is how men's perception of sustainable actions as feminine affect our social actions against climate change. So uh, this research question is going to be um, focused on those concepts, ecological care and relationships. And what I did is to um, grasp all these previous literature that were uh, of, of those concepts. And I'll try to make this relationship with a previous semantic study that were uh, done in with Chilean men and women on how they perceive um, three, three concepts that were eating meat, vegetarianism, and a vegetarian person. So we're going to have a discussion about those topics, ecological care, masculinities, their relationship, and we're going to see in this semantic work how this, this actually can be uh, seen in the perception of men and women with diets um, about meat and vegetables. So starting with the sustainable actions, there is literature that tells us that some of those actions are socialized different to women and men. We have this uh, category that is socialized to women that they are relational. They are socially responsible, they're caring, they're altruistic, and they're more willing to engage in environmental issues. Whereas with men, they're more driven to this market solution and technology discussions. So this is how men and women have been socialized to talk about climate crisis and climate change. And we can see that when we talk about climate crisis, climate change, and the things that we need to do, there, one of those categories is more on the center of those discussions. For example, if we think about the COP26, what are the major discussions that were happening there? Were they about ecological care or were they about solutions based on technology or market solutions? So we do know that this socialized category to men on how we have to combat climate crisis are more centered in um, high level discussions. But why does this happen? So we have this concept about dominant masculinity that legitimates unequal gender relations by positioning superior masculine qualities against inferior feminine qualities. So we have these two categories. And that was the thing that I was talking about COP. Uh, the discussions were driving to market solutions, to technology. And actually, the literature also states that men are reluctant to climate politics, to ethics, to environmental justice, when we talk about climate crisis actions. And this, um, these categories, these concepts that they are reluctant, they are more, they are seen as feminine. So these um, concepts are related uh, to ecological care. So ecological care is to try to understand how our own actions affect our climate crisis, our climate environment, uh, what we produce, what we consume, and caring about that and making actions with that, with that knowledge. But what Anselm and Holman tells us is that ecological care is a threat to men's gender identity and dominant position in society. So this actually explains us a little bit why men are reluctant to 
ecological care to those concepts about climate politics, ethics, environmental justice, and we're just talking about market solutions, technology, and we tend to keep out the uh, about the socially responsible actions that we need to do in terms of climate crisis. And there are a lot of ex uh, examples that we can talk about that masculinity and ecological care, but we're going to focus on one that is veganism. And why talk about veganism? Because the industry of meat is one of those industries that contaminates the most. Uh, Shai et al. tells us that uh, when more animal protein consume, the higher the water use will be. So they actually have uh, this discussion and I made this chart to understand how the different diets have environmental impact where omnivores, where uh, people eat meat, they, it is the diet that has the greatest environmental impact, whereas the lowest is the vegan. So we can see that consuming animal uh, products have more environmental impact. So we have studies, we have research that tells us that eating meat is something that has a great environmental impact. So yeah, if we do keep eating meat, it's not a sustainable action. But something important that, you know, on the this discussion that the authors make, uh, they state that the changes in our diet are not possible without trying to understand the social norms and social recommendations and the culture. And we cannot change that if we do not see the social issues. So we do need to talk about how our consuming uh, is affected by gender. And we can say, well, how our food is genderized, how food has something to do about how I've been constructed in a binary world. Well, let's see these two pictures. We do know that those pictures have been portrayed in media differently. So, food has been associated most, more with women and meat has been more associated with men. And this is something that we do know. We grew up seeing all these media commercials. We all these talks about how meat is something that men need to eat. So there is a difference in how we see food and gender. So this is where I'm going to start talking about this semantic work that was made with Chilean men and women. And we need to talk about how also meat and strength have a very specific relationship. Berkeley tells us that meat has been used to bolster this um, sense of masculinity, especially red meat. And it, it has also been a significance of hierarchy, domination, and power. And we see it where here men use these concepts different from women, though they have similar concepts that they use like protein, like fat and roast and animals. They men use these words like energy, red and strength. So we do see that, for example, energy and strength are, can be used to understand power, uh, a sense of power and domination structure. Though women also say the concept energy, the percentage is lower from, from men. And I want to focus as well with um, especially red meat that Berkeley says, because men do uh, talk about chicken, but they don't talk about fish. When women do talk about other kinds of meat, not just red meat, and even the red meat is at the lowest concept. And we do have to talk about also about ecological care, about this responsibility, about how it tells us that women are often socialized into being relational, socially responsible, altruistic, and caring. Those were the concepts that we used when we saw that the two different categories in sustainable actions. And these tables are related to the semantic work with vegetarianism and vegetarian person. So they also have these similar concepts. And actually I, I made this note that vegetables in Spanish have two different words, but in, in English it's just one. So that is why it is uh, repeated. 
but we can see how women, when we talk about vegetarianism and sorry for that, vegetarian person, they use these words like respect and responsible that men to not choose. So this is happening. The women have this sense that these actions to not eat meat is a sense of respect, of responsibility that men do not see that. And in the third table, when we talk about vegetarian person, that is something interesting where men use these three words, hippie, ideology, ideologized, and revolutionary. And actually in Spanish, I want to state that revolutionary is not always used as something good. It is also used as like the word ideologized. So we have this state by Holman that says that men's privileged position makes them to suffer from and recognize unequal power relations and gives them little incentive to change. So how they use these words to describe a vegetarian person like hippie, ideologized, revolutionary is some words that are used just to say that to describe a person that we that doesn't even think about their actions. They, they're just driving to do it. They're just ideologized, they're hippies. So we can see how their conception of a sustainable action as a vegetarian person is, is a threat to them. And this relates to that specific um, state that Anselm and Holman um, made that ecological care is a threat to men's gender identity and dominant position in society. So we do see that there is a relationship between how we consume it and gender, and that affects the sustainable actions made for trying to fight climate crisis. So this is important to notice, I'm sorry for that, because uh, when we talk about climate crisis, we need to talk about all the social norms and constructions that have been educated to us and we have developed and we have replicated to understand how can we do, can we, how can we do sustainable actions? If we do not look, if we do not look at them, we cannot talk about a sustainable society. We need to have high level discussions that involve gender, race, disabilities, and other social issues to have effective discussions, to have effective interventions to that. So we have to understand that gender does play a, a specific and important role in climate crisis. And when we do sustainable actions, we need to think about how gender, how our social uh, construction develops an obstacle to that. Thank you.